Hello Cancer, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. This is a very interesting reading and, and it's unexpected, but I suppose uh, not entirely unexpected. And I think that although it is your reading Cancer, that it probably applies to most of the collective. So it sort of came out in two goes. Um, I did a spread with this as the initial card, but I couldn't, I couldn't get the sense of it. And so I asked you to try again. And now I see. So the two cards here are this life breath and then the vampire. And not even so much the vampire as this figure behind. So this juxtaposition, these kind of opposites, right? If, if the vampire is undead, and then we have this life breath card. So the first warning kind of is about um, complacency, maybe, um, or allowing oneself to be stopped. So we have this Ten of Pentacles, and then right behind that, the Hierophant. So being, being stopped by structure, allowing yourself to be stopped by structure. It may be um, societal rules, perhaps. It may be some logistical structures that have to do with, you know, maybe your job or how your life is arranged. Or they may be kind of self-imposed structures, habits of thought, the ruts in our mind that we trundle across frequently. So there's this hanged man, right, being, um, being held up by, right, this is a little bit of the complacency or the, you know, getting kind of lost in contemplation uh, lost in too much spiritual activity, you know, meditating for hours and hours a day. At the bottom of the deck is this King of Swords, right? This mental uh, obstruction, perhaps the ways in which our minds can get in our own way. And that we can, right, that the mind can mistake a physical structure for, you know, kind of a full stop. That if this, you know, Ten of Pentacles energy shows up or this Hierophant energy shows up, that that's it. There's also this Nine of Wands of uh, overdoing, exhaustion, trying to do all the things.
right, with the world trying to be all the things. Right, all the ways, right, there's, there's a lot here about, right, about the mind and how it can get in our own way. And I don't know, I almost think um, this may be possibly cancer your, your last reading before the new year. Um, this series ends on Christmas. And then we start again with the moon on the 26th. But I have this notion that this has something to do with Pluto's imminent move into Aquarius. on January 20th. And that this is kind of a heads up. A heads up about what that shift of Pluto from Earth to air, from being directly opposite you to being in the sign that's clink-unks. Then we have the Two of Swords, indecision. And here with a kind of, right, looking behind her, she's looking behind her. Um, maybe not so much second, not indecision, but second guessing. So all the ways, right, allowing structure to stop you. Um, you know, getting lost in your own mind, in contemplation and practices, so kind of doing nothing. Um, exhaustion with the Nine of Wands, uh, a feeling of hopelessness, um, a feeling of having to shoulder the whole burden with the world and then perhaps indecision or second guessing with this two of swords. But this of course isn't the whole story. We have the Hierophant again, but this time, right, it's the tree at least in my mind, right, the Hierophant is this tree whose roots go down below and whose branches climb up above. So instead of authority, rules, red tape, um, or the worn grooves in our own mind, we have this nature Hierophant. this growing sort of tree of wisdom hierophant that is always available to you. And here the, the two below cards are the elder of water and the elder of fire. These sit in the king position in this deck. So full mastery of these elements in a, right, in a, in a wisdom way, in a, uh, in a natural world way. You know, vampires as a, um, as an item in literature, became kind of famous, right, with Dracula during the Victorian period. And that whole space, right, the 19th century, is a space of man moving into a more mechanical 
way of being, uh, moving away from nature. And with this vampire kind of, I mean, he, Ryan Dracula was a symbol, right, of Victorian repression, but also this idea of the animal self that can get dislocated. In the, you know, kind of very digital, heady way that we live. And where there's this, I don't want to call it a danger, there's a possibility, right, of getting caught up in all of these mental patterns. But as an antidote, as a, or as a, as a, as an opposite choice, right, rather than choosing the undead, we choose life and breath. So the night of water, spreading the love. So whereas the hanged man, right, is a very solitary kind of spiritual pursuit. This night of water is about sharing the song. Right, being here with others, um, being vocal. By right, being involved, having an open heart. Right, and so if we find ourselves in this eight of air space, we don't have to stay there. Right, her wings are not actually cocooned. Right, she could lift off from there. We don't have to stay there. Right, we have the page of fire energy. If ever we get caught up in our mind, with any of these kinds of mental patterns that we might have, we can always start again. The, the choice to begin again, begin again and begin again, is available. And with this journey card, There's also a suggestion, an invitation to really focus on the body. To think of, to think of our body as our, right, as a friend, as a companion, as our consort. As Clarissa Pincola Estes calls it. that we are together, we have that body, nature connected self, if we get up in our heads about stuff. At the bottom of this deck is the moon dance, which interestingly has come up several times in different readings as the bottom card lately. So this connection, the cycle's connection to the moon, especially for you, Cancer, to allow yourself to feel that connection, to know it fully, to be led by it, even if it's inconvenient. Change of seasons. 
there is change. And some of this may also be because we're heading into here in the Northern Hemisphere, the darkest time of the year. And although this is a turning point, and we'll start to get lighter and lighter after the solstice, there is still a long period where the days are quite short and where the sun doesn't get very high up in the sky. And that the possibilities of depression or anxiety are heightened. But it's only a temporary situation. Right, we are at home. We are always at home. No matter where we are. We are always in touch with our wider self, or at least we have the option to be in touch, right? The, the wider self is always there and aware of us. And we can choose to be aware of it. And also we are always at home on the earth. So that even if we feel, right, if we feel this stranded energy, it's only temporary. So really there's some, I don't know, there's some, I feel like there must be some challenge that's coming. If it's not Pluto's move, maybe for some of you it's a personal, um, transit might have something to do with uh if you're watching this now with mercury's retrograde partly through capricorn across the way from you uh, might have to do with saturn starting to speed up in pisces trine right there might be a sense that you need to act Um, not long from now, Mars will move into Capricorn across the way from you next month, sometime. And that may also, um, you may feel pressure then to move, to act, to do something. So something is coming, Cancer that is going to apply pressure. And there may be a temptation to slip back into old patterns, to perseverate, to get lost in your head. And this is an invitation to step out of that, to be aware that it might happen and then to turn your face in a different direction. Because then we have a whole bunch of water. Your element. We have water, your garden. Nourishment, body care, tenderness, rest. And below that is Immerse yourself. Training, learning, new hobbies, passions. But immersing, you know, in something uh, that is nourishing rather than something escapist. And at the bottom of the deck is this clear waters. Clear vision, confirmation, right timing, opportunity. So this is all your energy, all of the things that are available to you to nourish yourself. It is another thing that comes up uh, in my mind is that we are, right, it is the holiday season and there may be a lot of obligations. 
um, you know, events that you've been invited to, family that you need to go see, uh, you know, presents to buy, cookies to bake, all of these things that can give cancer so much pleasure to give and to nourish others. But maybe be careful that you don't do it at your own expense. The Seas of Mintaka. Seeing potential bringing unconsciousness to light. So, right, that you have the capability to be aware of your own foibles, uh, the places where you tend to trip yourself up, and that you could, you know, maybe choose to avoid things in the current moment. You say no to some of the parties. Especially right that person's party, because you know. <laughs> you know, or instead of a whole week with your family, you only spend two or three days. Right? And don't bury things. Don't just right cover it up to get through the holiday, right? Because then we have beneath the surface. What's really driving you? True motives, breaking free. So why are you giving gifts to those people? I know it's a little bit late. We're almost to Christmas. You've probably bought most of your gifts. But why do you do it? Um, or, you know, why do you go to those events? Or, you know, do you need to bake cookies for the entire office? What is your motive for doing that? And this doesn't mean that you don't do it. It doesn't even mean that you don't do it if your motive is to, you know, get approval from your coworkers. The key is to know why you're doing something. What is your motive? What is your intention? Be clear on those things. And then with whale and orca elders, share your song, frequency of sound, diving deep. It may be What's most important for you and perhaps for other people is your presence, your song. That you don't need to, you know, bake all the cookies or do all the things. That you don't have to solve all the problems, be all the people to everyone. You can just be there as yourself. Because that's what's most important. Advice. We've already had some, but with this ace of discs and the fool right underneath, How do you enter into new things? And maybe this is coming up because of this whole idea of the new year and resolutions. Do you burden yourself with a whole bunch of things that you have to adhere to, get done? Um, in this new year, all, all the ways that you're just going to be better? Or can you embrace the new year with this fool energy without uh, needing, you know, to make lots of resolutions 
without needing to do all the things. Because there is something. This card. There's something underlying it, something, some need. Some longing, yearning need that, that has been unfulfilled. And then maybe you do all the things trying to fill that need. But, right, it's, you're not going to find it in those places. Here with the devil. The devil as advice. The devil as the great adversary to the status quo. Uh, the devil as Saturn, Lord of Time, the Master Builder, who is moving trine through Pisces. Choosing to do things differently, choosing perhaps to put yourself first. Choosing to say no to certain obligations, to say no to the whole idea of resolutions, to say no to that litany of self-criticism that might show up. Right? There's that advice, you know, to look back on your year and see what you've accomplished. And, you know, I say fie on that. Forget it. Who cares? You did stuff. And hopefully you had fun doing some of it. But that's done. Let's talk about the now. Let's not do an autopsy of the past year. Right? Let's not perpetuate this hunger. Four cups luxury. Let's luxuriate. Luxuriate A in this space, if you're watching this when I post it. We are in the halcyon days now, the seven days before and after the solstice. We are in a space where some things come to a halt, right? Sometimes businesses slow down or even shut down entirely for the week between Christmas and New Year's. Things tend to be slow in a work way for many people. It is winter time here in the Northern Hemisphere. So there's space. Luxuriate in the space. You know, and provide yourself, right? Water your garden. Provide yourself with some luxuries. They don't have to be complicated. They're just whatever feels like luxury to you. And then with the Six of Swords, uh, you know, have a look at your mind, where your mind is going, what is it doing? And this says science here, which I almost want to say that maybe this is a time to conduct some experiments. You know what happens if I think positive thoughts for the next two weeks? 
what happens if I, you know, buy whatever I want for the next two weeks? You know, something that I really want, you know, not that's a whim or, you know, just a passing fancy, but, you know, I really, you know, I really love that dress or those shoes or, you know, that trilogy of books I've been wanting to read. I just, you know, get them for myself. Or I could, you know, I could stop making breakfast for everybody in the house for two weeks. Right? Whatever it is. A little experiment. And then four of pentacles, power. Remembering Remembering who you are, who we all are. Holding on to the power in your mind. And kind of, I want to say here with this card, right, there's this walkway. Be really discerning about who and what you allow into your, you know, into your castle, into your compound. That could be a luxury too, saying no to those three people who usually come and, you know, visit. Or who call or who, you know, sit down and complain to you in the break room. Just say no. So cancer, I mean, this does feel, it feels a little strange to me, right? This sense of warning, but perhaps, perhaps you've really been feeling some sort of weight, some sort of tug to pull you back into a pattern that you've been leaving. And that you just needed this little reminder that you don't have to do it. You can just say no. Right? Then one of the things about vampire legends is that you have to invite them in. They can't just cross your threshold. You have to invite them in. Don't invite the vampire in, Cancer. Don't let them cross into your space. Whether it's people, or events or obligations or your boss saying, hey, can you just stay late on this night? No. The answer is no at this time. We don't know what will happen a month from now. But at this moment, the answer is no. And you can start again whenever you want. Cancer, I definitely wish you all the very, very best. I hope that you find it easier than you expect to just say no. If I don't speak to you before the new year, um, have a, certainly have a merry, merry solstice and a very happy new year, Cancer. And I will see you next time. So long.